Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. Got your paint set up and ready to do a fantastic painting with me? Good. Tell you what, let's start out and have them graphically run all the colors across the screen that you need to do this painting at home with me. And they'll come across, as usual, in the same order as I have them on the palette, starting with the white and working around. While they're doing that, let's go on up here in the canvas and talk a little bit. Now, I'll tell you what, I like to share things with you. I've got, I've got to show you a picture of the youngest painter that I have met lately. And this is, this is William. And William I met in Springfield, Missouri. He's four years old, and he is a fantastic painter. He brought his picture in and let me see it. And uh, certainly glad to have William working with us. Now, the canvas is an 18 by 24, and I've completely covered it with a thin, even coat of the liquid white. So it's all slick, and it's ready to go. You, let's do it. Let's start out today with a least little touch, least little touch of cad yellow into the large brush. Just tap a little color in there. Okay, and you have to make a decision right off today. Where's your horizon going to be? Let's make it right about here. Let's do it. Such a beautiful day. Let's do a fantastic, bright, shiny painting today. One that'll make you happy. Put a little bit of yellow in there. Let it blend with the liquid white. Okay. Now, without cleaning the brush, I'm going back into yellow ochre. Just tap a little bit of the yellow ochre right into the same old dirty brush. Okay. Now, right above the yellow, I'm going to add a little touch of the yellow ochre. Just like so. And let it blend right in also. See how easy that is? Now, without cleaning the brush, I'm going into a touch of bright red. Just a touch. It's very, very strong. It'll, it'll eat up your whole world in one heartbeat. Now, right along here, I'm going to add a little touch of the red. And just sort of let it play on out through here, wherever, wherever. Let it have fun. Now, with what little's left on the brush, I'm just going to mix it with a little bit of the liquid white on the canvas. It just makes sort of a nice little peachy color right here. Now, very lightly, we can blend all this together. So we have layers of color. Okay, same old dirty brush. Add a little titanium white. And we'll go right in here. I want this area right in here to be nice and bright and shiny. So I'm going to add just straight titanium white and work it in. Now when this is done, this area will be bright and shiny. It doesn't look shiny now because it's against a light background. But we're going to put some dark colors in there and then it'll happen. Okay. Let's take us a, a little bit of a lizard crimson and some phthalo blue. Lizard crimson, phthalo blue proportionately. We need much more crimson than blue. Just mix it on the brush. Let's go right back up in here. Now let's, let's make a nice lavender color. And I'm just gonna go right around in here and begin spinning in just the indication of some happy little cloud shapes here and there. Some beautiful little colors happening here. Just sort of work them in. Just mix them in, blend them. There, make all kinds of little things just happen. Don't kill all this pink. Leave some of it in there so it shines through the clouds. Okay, a little touch more. Maybe there's a happy little cloud that just sort of, mm, there he comes, floats right out in there, wherever you want him. Now, I'm gonna add a little bit more of the phthalo blue. Still haven't cleaned the brush. And then with this phthalo blue, we'll put a little bit of blue right up here at the top. Like so. See there? Maybe a little touch right there just to bring it all together. Now then, time to clean the brush. <laughs> That's the fun part. Odorless paint thinner. Shake off the excess. And, <laughs> and you totally redecorate the studio. Now at home, I suggest you get your brush beater rack and put it in the bottom of a trash can so you don't change your whole decor and in a matter of seconds. Now with a clean dry brush, I'm gonna begin blending this entire sky together. Just very gently. Just sort of mix it up, blend it. Blend it, little circular strokes, crisscross strokes, whatever it takes to make some nice effects. Just sort of look at your painting. Each painting is gonna be a little different. And there, 
never can copy. They're always individual. Look at all the beautiful things that are happening in that sky. Isn't that a super way to make a fantastic sky very quickly and very easy? Shoot, I used to work myself to death trying to create a sky like that. But it's easy. It's very easy. You can do it. Ooh, you could do it. There we go. Ain't that easy? That easy. We have one dynamite sky. Beautiful. Beautiful sky. Now you can also see how that light area just sort of jumps out at you after you put the dark on. Clean the brush. <laughs> Beat the devil out of it. And we're ready. Tell you what, let's play a little bit with a little oval brush. And I'm gonna go right in here. Let's take some, let's take some lizard crimson, a little bit of black, and some brown. Put some dark sand in there too. What the heck? A little touch of white, just to lighten it up so we can see what we have. Ooh, that's a nice color. Clean the knife off. I just cleaned the knife on paper towels so you wonder where I'm going over there. Okay, this is a little oval brush. See it's round. There you can see it. It's round. Okay. Load a little paint on it. Let's have a little footy hill back here in the distance somewhere. And all I'm going to do is just take this brush and tap. See, look at all the little, looks like little treetops far, far away. Just hundreds of them that quick. Boy, that's sneaky, huh? Now, I left a little bit of this yellow underneath because I want to I wanna blend it out and create mist. And I want the mist to have sort of a yellowish hue to it. So it looks like there's light playing through there. Now with a large brush, I'm just going to tap the base of this. Don't touch the top, just the base. Just tapping. Okay, very lightly, very lightly. Just lift it up, blend it together. Now then, now see the soft, nice misty area right into here? That's what'll help create the illusion of distance when we get a little further along in the painting. Now then, gotta make some big decisions. We'll just use that same old color. Same old color, that was, what did we have there? We had a lizard crimson, some Van Dyke brown, some dark sienna, whatever. You can throw a little black in there too if you want to. All we're looking for now is a nice darkish color to lay down for a base coat. And then on top of that, we'll put a light color. Just tap the brush in there. Okay, let's go right up here. Now you have to make big decisions. Let's start creating some land masses in here. All you do, just touch and tap. Just tap it down right, see there? That easy, that easy. And we can create a nice little land area back here. You don't want to kill this misty area. This little misty area between the dark and the, and the foothill is the only thing you have to separate. You need to save it, treasure it. It's your good friend. Good, good friend. Now then, I'll just use the same old dirty brush. What the heck? I'm lazy, don't like to clean brushes. Take a little yellow, a little cad yellow, a little sap green. We'll jump over here and get some yellow ochre too. What the heck, it doesn't matter. Tap the brush, tap it. Okay, let's go right up here. Now then, let's put some little highlights. You need that dark in order to make that light show. See there? Look at that. Look at that. You can make beautiful, soft little grassy areas. That easy. That easy. Just tap them in. Following the lay of the land. This is where you begin creating the shape of your land. So it's very important that you pay attention to the angles here. See, and that easy, you have a plane back here all finished up. Tell you what, I'm gonna get a, a new brush. Let's take the same color. We'll use some lizard crimson, some black, dark sienna, Van Dyke brown. Throw a little sap green there too. What the heck, as long as it's dark, that's a big thing. Tap the brush, okay. Now we have to make another big decision. Maybe there's another plane or another layer of land that comes right down in front of that one. Maybe like that. See, when you have this much power, you have to make decisions. You have to make decisions. You can move mountains and rivers. There, and all we're doing here is applying the dark so our light will show. There we 
we go. Mm. Is that easy that is? In reality, you could put this on with a paint roller. All you're doing is putting on dark for base coat. It's gonna be the shadows. It'll be the shadows in all the little grassy areas here. There. And you're tapping quite firmly here. Just really, this is where you take out all your hostilities. This is, this is better than going home and arguing with your spouse or kicking the dog or whatever. There we go. Why that young fellow I showed you at the beginning of the show, he's some painter, isn't he? As I say, I met him in Springfield, Missouri. We, we did a show there for the PBS station and he, he came to see us. Fantastic young man. We met so many super people there. Looking forward to going back in the near future. There. Okay. Well, I just got carried away here talking and just cover up the whole canvas. Why not? Let's just cover up the whole canvas. It doesn't make any difference. There. Okay, just tap. See, I like to leave some of these light areas, and here's the reason I tap instead of just painting all this. Because some of these little light areas will show through. And it makes just makes nice looking places. Okay. Tell you what. Tell you what, let's do. Let's take, let's use the old round brush. We'll have some fun. We'll take the round brush and go right into some Van Dyke Brown, a little touch of the dark sienna. And all I'm doing is tapping very firmly to load it. Just tap. Let's go right up here. Maybe there's a little clump of trees live right in here. They live right in there. And I start at the bottom and work up. So to pick up the, the liquid white and get lighter and lighter in value as it works upward because more light's going to shine through these limbs and everything up here. Much more light. There we go. A little touch more of the paint. Maybe there's a happy tree right there. We don't know. Just Wherever, wherever you want a little tree to live in your world, that's the right place for it. That is the right place. There we go. Look at that. Already, you got the basic shape for some nice little trees. Yeah, let's take our old script liner brush, and I'll just use I'll just use some paint thinner and go right into the brown. We want to thin this paint down until it's very thin. Turn the brush, turn it, pull it out. That brings it to a nice sharp point. Let's go up here. Now then, we need a few tree trunks in here. There we go. Now if your paint does not flow, add a little more of the paint thinner to it. A thin paint will stick to a thick paint. Maybe there's a few out in here. Now at home, you have unlimited time. You can just, you can do a much better job. You can put all kinds of details in here and little tree branches and limbs and a squirrel or two here and there. Oh, you can get crazy. This is where the little bunny rabbit hides out. He's my friend. Okay. Now I'm going back into the brown. Right now it looks like all the, all the foliage is on the back of the tree. I want some on this side too. So using the same color here and there, I'm just going to tap in a little foliage on this side of the tree. See? That way. It doesn't look like it's all on the other side of the tree, like somebody took a big razor blade and cut your tree in two and it, <laughs> it fell off on the floor. There we go. That easy. Now then, let's get us, let's get us a big fan brush. I'm going to take some black, Prussian blue, sap green. Just a good dark color here. Mix that up. Clean knife. Let's take the old fan brush and load it full of paint. A lot of paint. Just really fill it up. Boy, look at that. A lot of paint in there. Okay, let's go up here. Now maybe there's a happy little evergreen tree who lives right there. Right there. And we don't have anything but happy trees. Just work back and forth. Now see how this dark color shows up against that light? Mm. The contrast there is beautiful just really jumps out at you. Really jumps out. That's what makes your painting beautiful. Okay, I'll tell you what let's do. 
Let's make a whole clump of trees. We, we don't want one old tree laying up here lonely. You get sad and start crying. Nothing worse than an unhappy tree. I had one bite me one time when I was little. There. Okay. There's one right here. You gotta have a place for the little birds to sit. They like to hide in these kind of trees. They can hide in there and the, and the hawks and the stuff can't see them. There we go. And you sort of have to make a decision here how many trees you want in your world. Tell you what, maybe there's a tiny one here. Then I'm gonna quit. I just get I get carried away with these trees are so much fun. Just put a little one right there. Okay, I'm going back to the old brush that has some of the yellows and greens on it that we were using to make the little grassy areas. And let's tap a little more of that color in there. Go right up here. I want to create the illusion of a little bit of, there, see? Nice soft little area. We're going to let that pick up some of this dark color. Look at there. Just let it work right on out. Right on out. And all you have to do here is just tap. No big deal easy to do. So now you can push those trees right back. I'm going to let it get darker and darker and darker back in here. There's a lot of shadow over here. So don't add any new color. Just use that same old dark color and let it pick up all the dark and just fade right into nothing. See how soft? You can do it. Maybe there's a nice little thing right there. I don't know. Wherever. Okay. Let's have some fun. Let's take the knife. I'm going to use some dark sienna, a little bit of white, pull it out flat, and cut across to get that little roll of paint. Okay? Now then, let's go right up here, and let's just put the indication of a little tree trunk. Put one in there. Doop, doop. Wherever you want them. We don't know how many trees live back here in this clump. This is a family, and they're happy back here few little arms and sticks and twigs. Tell you what let's do. Let's use our oval brush. We're going to go into some yellow, some yellow, yellow, some sap green. Pull that brush through there, wiggle it, bring it to a nice sharp edge. Okay, let's go right back up here. Now then, let's come right down here and let's just put, ooh, look at that, look at that. Look at all the little, this little brush is just fantastic for making thousands of little limbs there. Just there they go. See them? Look at all those little devils. And this brush being oval, they're sort of roundish. It makes it, it gives it shape. It gives it some character. Let's put some on this one. Don't want him to get upset because he doesn't have any. I hope you can see all the little details that brush makes. There we go. Let's go right over here goes and you can put as many as you want on there okay it's such a nice little area tell you what let's build a house back here shoot let's take some van dyke brown let's pull it out grab us some of the night you have to make a big decision maybe the house lives right there see right in front of our tree put that on now we'll come over here let's put the other side of the roof just like building a house there we go. Just lay in a nice base color, a dark color. There. That easy. Now then, we need a front on him. In your world, you look around and see what kind of house you want, and you put him in there. Maybe you want to, maybe you want to put an old barn in yours. Maybe we'll make this one a barn. Who knows? We'll see what happens here. Sort of look at it and see, making big decisions later. Okay, I'm going to take some of the bright red and some dark sienna. Now then, let's put a red roof on this one. We'll start here and just let it sort of bounce. Just boop, 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 right down. Got to make that little noise or it doesn't work. Do, 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 do. See there? See this old roof? Boy, he's like me. He's old and had a rough life. The rain's coming through on him. Now then, let's take some white. A little bit of the dark sienna. There. Very good. Let's touch. 
no pressure. Old wood, no pressure. Just like when we put snow on the mountains, no pressure. I like to teach people to put snow on the mountains because if you can do that, then all this other, other stuff with a knife becomes very easy. It's the best way to make friends with that knife. You, sometimes it, it's neat to take a tiny bit of yellow, a little yellow and put in there. See? Isn't that neat? This little yellow ochre. Make it look old and tired. Now, on the other side, very dark, very dark over here. Boom, boom, just a little indication. Now then, I'll take a, just a point of the knife and we'll just make some old boards in here, just by pulling down. Look at that. Oh, I wish it was that easy to build a house. There we go. Well, we got the old shed. Now we can, we can chop it up and get our perspective right. We just did a, a houseectomy. Now, maybe, I'll tell you what, maybe this old guy's like me. Maybe he ran out of room and had to build him a shed out here. See, that easy, that easy. Got a little shed. I'm a junk collector, so I'm always needing a place to put all my stuff. There we go. A little bit of this color out here. Soup, soup. Bring it all together. A few little boards. See right there would be a good place to get the small knife and sneak right in there. Look at that. That little knife comes in handy sometime. Tell you what, when I got that little knife, take some brown. Maybe there's a little window up here. Put a little white around it, like so. Shoot, that was so much fun. Let's put a little window right there. See, and just cut around it, let a little of that color show through. And you're in business. That easy. All right. Now then, let's take, let's take some yellow on the brush, and now we can use this to sort of clean up his foots. So you tap in all these little grassy things here. Follow the lay of the land. We'll reach over here and we'll get some Indian yellow. Here and there, a little touch of the bright red. Just let that all work together. Look at there. Just layer after layer after layer. Boy, that's one poor looking old house. Carpenter had about as much ambition as I do. It lazy. There we go. Just another hill, another hill. And as many as you want. There. Let's bring some right down in here. Like so. I'll tell you what, let's do here. Let's have some fun. Maybe get us a big gob of dark color here. Some black and some blue and some sap green. Just good dark color. We don't care what it is. Doesn't matter. Okay, load the big brush full. We'll have some fun. Let's, let's do a big evergreen tree on the other side. Don't want the other side to be left out. Okay, let's go right here. There he is. Just the corner of the brush. We're sort of working back and forth. And we'll put a, ooh, We'll put a big old tree right there. Son of a gun, that's a big tree. It's growing every minute, too. Time we get through, we may have a giant redwood. That easy. Let's give him, let's give him one little friend. We don't want him to get lonely over here. Just like that. We don't care in here, we'll separate that with highlights. And maybe, see here, we'll just bring the land mass right down through here. Just put a little color in there. And that quick, we got a little, little color. Then we can take our yellows, greens. See here, we need that dark to make this stand out. And then we can just begin tapping in layer after layer after layer. All these soft little grassy areas. Just let them go. And the more you tap, the smoother and softer they get. There. I'll go back to the old oval brush. Load some of the green in it. Oh, I'll tell you what, we need a tree trunk. 
I'll take some brown and white. We'll put the indication of a little tree trunk, like so. Now with the oval brush, I'll put some, look at there, put some leaves on this tree, make him stand out in the sun and shine. There we go, there we go. Darker, darker, darker as it goes down toward the base. All kinds of little things. Let's have some fun. What the heck? I'm gonna take a little, the brown on my liner brush. Maybe back here in the distance somewhere, there's a little fence. It goes right on off over the hill. We don't know where it goes. A few little indications here and there. There we go. And fences are a lot of fun to make. I enjoy it. Tell you what, let's make a big fence. I'm running out of time here, but we'll do it anyway. What the heck? There's one, two, three, four, and one that we can't even see. A little brown and white, give him a little highlight, like so. And you can put a little fence in there. And we take a little liquid white, cut across it, just to heal the knife. Soon, look at there, isn't that an easy way to make wire? You can put as many strands as you want on there, just that easy. I think we have one that's about ready to sign. Take a little thinner, a little of the bright red, and we'll sign this one. Sincerely hope you've enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you again next time. And until then, from all of us here, happy painting. God bless.